it's a time for Package from China. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to talk about a completely new handheld from a friend from China. But this is something totally different. Okay, to begin with this thing, it's not really a brand or at this moment making review, I didn't find any brands that are selling this. It's just an emulation game system. But there is something different with this version. I already did some, let's say, cheap versions of an emulation handheld. But I was very curious, what are we going to get? So let's talk about that and what can we do with this little me machine. So here at the left side we're having this very cheap and I must say it responds not bad uh, for a very cheap little analog stick. You can remove it if you want to. So yeah, that is a little bit of a downside. But still I personally prefer a D-pad but I think this is going to be a very unique experience. At the right side we're getting six buttons and this is more than enough if you want to play fighting games. But keep in mind, there are no shoulder buttons. So this is what we're going to get. Okay, the top row is for going back to the menu, select and start. And the select button, this is something we're going to need for entering credit with arcade games. So at the right, we're having this little CF card. So that is a four gigabyte. That is the thing that we're going to use. I must say, be careful putting it back in. As you can see, I almost messed it up. And at the top, we're finding the analog switch, the volume control, the USB for charging, and the TV out function. But when it comes to the quality control is very poor and you can see that the backplate is not even fitting perfectly. I must say it weighs quite heavy so that is something that is very nice. Alright so let's power it on and let's talk about the emulation and what can it do and how good is this system. The All One Super Game System. Need to see it correctly. Like with a lot of these cheap devices you can see that it has a very basic display in it. It's not even an IPS and the view angle is pretty poor. So it's going to be a challenge recording from this display. I already did some reviews of a different open simulator handheld and this is basically the same. They did rip off the little tune or the little selection tune from a PSP. So if you're wondering where this was from. It is very responsive. That is also a little bit of a problem with some of these cheap handhelds. So let's go to the settings. The A is exactly in the middle. As you can see we have normal settings. Language, product information, let's check that. Total size, strange. Factory default, output, here you can choose what kind of TV out that we're going to use. We're going to use the LCD for now. Okay, we always need to press the home button for going back, very strange. And here we have the power settings. We can basically have a screensaver or just turn the system off after an amount of time. All right, so let's go back to the menu. But you can see already we're having these little thumbnails over here there is no way of changing them so what you see is what you're going to get there's a support for nes gba mega drive super famicom main so there's no support for playstation but i can already tell you this device is not very powerful and i think we need to be happy if it even runs the normal stuff decent between the game and the main menu when you're pressing the home button or you're pressing the home button in game you are going to get this quick load and quick save menu. This basically applies for every single emulator that's on the device. As you can see, we can make a quick save. Let's start it up. All right, let's go to the load. Let's see if it works. Yep, works like a charm. That sounds not bad at all. With this little mono speaker here at the bottom. Oh, the analog stick is freaking horrible. The sound is not like it should be. Oh man, this analog stick is freaking horrible. 
I want my beat bad back. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. But you can just hear that it is running really choppy. Okay, so let's try and make a drive game. Let's see how good these are running. Oh, not that good. Hmm, I'm not running very bad. So let's try Super NES. Sound is pretty damn awful. Come, go down. So, this is a very fast racing game, so let's put it this way. And you can see that the gameplay is pretty choppy. Okay, so let's do it up. Sound is horrible. And yeah, no idea how I need to do this. Oh, like this. Him. So let's see how it's running. I played this game a lot on my Capcom Home Arcade, so I'm very curious. Huh. It's not running on the full speed, but it's running pretty decent. Okay, so when you're configuring the device for TV out, the display over here goes out, but we're having it over here. So let's see how it looks, because I'm very curious. All right, let's go to the main menu. I'm going to get full screen or what? I don't know what happened with the background, but the background is gone. Okay. I just wanted to show you when you're, let's say, choosing the PAL output, this is what you're going to get. So it is very important that you choose the right re region for your television. But all the strange thing is that, the last time I tried to boot it up, it just basically froze. Okay, second attempt. All right, so let's try an arcade game. Uh, let's see. We have full display, but it looks very horrible. Oh my God, this looks really horrible. I can do it special move but the analog stack is not that responsive you need to do the full movement otherwise it will not recognize the input 
All right, so let's take a close look inside and what are we going to get? So first of all, let's power it off. Let's remove the cap. It was very easy. Does it even fit that great? Hey, here we have the Nokia battery again. This is the BL5C. Very happy that you're using it because this is a very common battery. This is a 1020 milliamp. All right, so this is a big battery. Gives you, let's say, maybe a couple of hours playtime through two, three hours. Okay, so let's open it up. Let's give myself an Posey drive and let's see what's inside this bad boy. But the first thing I just wanted to show you before we're going to rip it apart, you can see it doesn't even close that great. So the quality of the product is very poor. I have seen my share of shitty handhelds, but this thing will go in my top 10 if it comes to the build quality. To be honest, I'm really a little bit really sad about it that I had very high expectations for this device. And I think, yeah, well, why should you even have this for a Chinese handheld? Because nowadays there are quite some good handhelds out there. This thing was not cheap. It was not a $15 handheld. This thing goes around $25. Still not a lot of money for a handheld that is basically a multi emulator handheld. But at the end, I was thinking, still very shitty. Big shame. Is it me or is this thing just not getting loose okay all right so let's remove these let's see what's beneath the bad boy no idea why it didn't close up because the pins were here all right here we have the pcb the little speakers over here okay i think i need to remove this one that is the only single screw that holds this thing in position Come on, get out. Oh man, I think I, I just realized the SD card was still in and I was holding the, oh, the, just the, the PCB inside. It's pretty weird, but all right. All right, so let's see what's inside. We're having the display in here. We can get the speaker loose, so we need to do it like this. So there are just old membranes buttons over here with the golden contact. We're having the display here. There's not enough information about it. And sadly, I'm guessing, yeah, they didn't imply any information on the chip. So we can't see what kind of information is on this. <sighs> Never mind. So this is what you're going to get. It's a pretty basic concept. Let's see what the information over here says. 2020, I'm guessing. The March 24. So. I never seen this handle before and this confirms it that this is a brand new model from this year. All right, so first of all, that is the main reason why I don't bother showing the TV out function because it looks like shit and I didn't even use a big monitor. It wasn't just a 90 inch, but nevertheless, so this is what you're going to get with this cheap China multi-platform emulator machine. The button response is not bad at all, but the analog stick, I hate it. I have no idea why they are choosing for an analog stick in this device beside a D-pad. But all right, so the quick load, quick save function works. The display itself, it's pretty poor, but this is what you're going to get with the device for this amount of money. If you want to have my opinion, just save up some money, get yourself a good one, because this is a waste of money. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.